Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, a proposed U.S. ban on Chinese tech in autos will have a big impact in Canada. So what should we do about it? And construction is one sector with really bad productivity. Can it fix itself? Plus, for all the talk of urban density, it seems a lot of us dream of a home in the suburbs. That's all ahead. First for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. Canadian consumer confidence hit a two and a half year high, according to a Bloomberg Nanos poll, as lower rates and a more positive view of the overall economy made more people optimistic about their own financial well-being, including a measure of their job security. Air Canada's tentative agreement with its pilots hasn't quite landed yet. After union leadership negotiated a 42% pay increase over four years, there are still critics of this deal, including newer pilots who feel unfairly treated relative to old timers. The head of the union said she would resign if the agreement is not ratified. Green terminal workers in Vancouver were on strike this week after talks with their employer broke down. That has grain farmers concerned. 52% of Canadian grain moves through the terminals. The estimated cost of the stoppage is $35 million a day. It is going to slow things down, uh, probably at the worst time for farmers. So right now they are harvesting. We're in the middle of harvest, they need a market. They need access to markets. Dock workers at American East Coast and Gulf Coast ports are threatening to walk off the job next week. That would shut down ports handling about half of the country's cargo ship volume. The Longshoremen's Union is demanding higher wages and a ban of automation for cranes, gates and container movement at the ports. The U.S. is proposing to block Chinese or Russian-made software or hardware in U.S. autos. The focus is on tech used in autonomous vehicles, which the U.S. argues could be hacked by bad actors. China says the move is an unfair expansion of the concept of national security. Like the tariff on electric vehicles, Canada would likely have to mirror any such ban. Cineplex was hit with a deceptive marketing ruling from Canada's Competition Tribunal. The decision relates to Cineplex's practice of charging an online booking fee added after the ticket price was shown, something the Bureau argued was drip pricing. Cineplex is being ordered to pay a $38.9 million fine. It says it will appeal the ruling. And those are your business briefs. The U.S. is proposing a new ban on Chinese and Russian software in autos. That'll have a direct impact on the Canadian auto sector. So where does Ontario stand? Vic Fidelli is Ontario's Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Thanks for being with us, Minister. Thanks, Amanda. Great to, uh, great to talk to you again. Is it a given that we get in lockstep with the U.S. on this kind of thing? Oh, it's absolutely imperative that we are absolutely in lockstep with the U.S. They're our largest trading partner. We are their third largest trading partner. And we need to do this not just for uh, uh, the U.S., but for our own security. In the U.S., they said this was an example of national security, something that China is pushing back on, saying that's an extreme use. But will it minister keep technology out that might help us advance faster? In other words, are we slowing our progress down a little bit? Well, I was in Washington last week and we met with uh, at the White House with the National Security, Treasury, Trade. We all agree this is an opportunity for our own uh, technology companies. It's not just technology, it's also some of the uh, parts, so some of the components. It's also a real opportunity for us to start making our own here. This, of course, was also true about electric vehicles. We followed the U.S. tariffs on that, and then we imposed tariffs as well on steel and aluminum from China, all coming at a cost. Do you worry about the economic costs that some of these, what some people might call protectionism? Well, we needed to do that because the uh, Chinese vehicles are artificially low priced. You know, they have low labor standards, uh, dirty energy. So they were coming in. Uh, we just cannot allow those kinds of vehicles with artificial prices. So we're 100 percent behind that. And we that's why we're urging the feds use every tool in your toolkit to make sure that, uh, that it's not punitive. You will have seen this argument. Uh, We know the Chinese can undercut their own margins, but that they can afford to do that. We get cheap vehicles as a result. Will we be able to hit our EV targets without them? Do you worry that some of those targets are going to be just harder to hit if we don't have those kinds of imported vehicles? Well, again, it's using low labor standards and dirty energy. So, you know, there's uh, there's that value chain that you look at as well in terms of the net effect uh, 
uh, and, and it, it 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 just we just could not allow those uh, uh, artificially low cost vehicles in here. In this case, now with the software and the hardware, you know that software could collect um, driver and passenger data, use cameras, use sensors. Uh, they can actually enable your driving system as well, and and that that's a really big concern. That you know, theoretically, they could just pull a plug on your vehicle one day. Uh, clearly, we're closely integrated with the North American automotive supply chain. Uh, we do have a review of our trade agreement coming up in 2026. What's your sense of how that will go? Are these tiny steps closer to matching and pairing our futures? Yeah, every time we use the word North American instead of, you know, buy American, we want North American parts made by North American workers uh, for North American security and North American jobs. Um, and we've also got, I'll call it an ace in the hole. That's probably an exaggeration, but it's a good phrase. Our critical minerals, you know, they don't really have nickel or uh, lithium in the States, a, a couple of mines. We've got everything here in Ontario. Uh, for instance, and across Canada as well. But here in Ontario, everything you need to make a lithium ion battery. And uh, uh, we're, we're really uh, going to make sure that that is front and center. It was in our meetings in Washington uh, last week, and they will be when we go back in December. What do you hear from the U.S. and others on moving faster in terms of developing some of those resources? Yeah, in fact, the uh, Department of Defense just invested $20 million in a, uh, a cobalt refinery north of where I live in North Bay, uh, in, in the town of Cobalt, aptly named, um, uh, with no quid pro quo. They're not looking for an offtake. It's just to make sure that we have a stable source of cobalt, uh, because almost all these minerals, 90% of all these minerals come from China. And so we need to push hard to mine our nickel. I think you're gonna see a new nickel mine open in Ontario. I think you're gonna see at least one, maybe two lithium mines open in Northwestern Ontario. So we're in good shape. Thanks for being here, Minister. Thank you, Amanda. Vic Fidelli is Ontario's Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Coming up, one of Canada's largest and fastest growing sectors is a big drag on productivity. So what can be done to make construction more efficient? Stay with us.